Good morning and welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning and welcome to St. Michael's. <laughs> On this, the fourth Sunday of Advent, please remain seated for the playing of the prelude. stand for the opening hymn, Once in Royal David City. It's found in the hymnal, it's number 102, and we will sing verses 1 through 3.
We light these candles to remind us that we must prepare our hearts for the coming of the Christ child. Please be seated. 
A reading from the book of Micah. You, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from old, from ancient days. Therefore, he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of the kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure. For now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us say together the song of Mary. My soul, soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their deceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones, and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us read the psalm responsibly at the half verse. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock. Shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim, in the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Massanah. Stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your kindness, and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angered despite the prayers of your people? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors. And our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. A reading from the book of Hebrews. When Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sin offerings you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, See, God, I have come to do your will, O God. In the scroll of the book it is written of me. When he said above, You have neither desired nor taken pleasure in sacrifices and offerings, and burnt offerings and sin offerings. These are offered according to the law. Then he added, See, I have come to do your will. He abolishes the first order to establish the second. And it's by God's will that we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, found in your hymnal number 56. We will sing verses 1, 4, 6, and 8.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always found acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Good morning. Well, today marks the fourth Sunday in the season of Advent, and as the choir comes down and is seated, Bobby, I'm going to give you this pomegranate, and I want you to hold it, okay, for the rest of the service, all right? Thank you. So this morning, on the fourth Sunday of Advent, we zero in on Mary, the mother of Jesus, of which there is no doubt. There is no question, either by the people of religion and faith at the time, nor of even the civil authorities at the time, that Mary is the mother of Jesus. And I want to begin by saying we all do ourselves a huge disfavor when we talk about Mary's method of conceiving. We focus so much on the fact that Mary was born, of, uh, was gave birth as a virgin to Jesus. And we miss the point totally. I would be heavily in favor of wiping out all of our childhood memories of whether Mary was a virgin or not when she conceived and instead go with a more reputable translation of what Mary was by modern day scholars. And that is that Mary was a young woman. A maiden would be the better way of interpreting all of this. And we need to bypass all of that talk and all of that focus on Mary as to whether or not she was a virgin. She was a young woman. And in all probability that meant that she had just become able to bear a child. What would that be in most people? Most female people. <laughs> <laughs> 30, 
13 and 14 years of age. Now that's what's important. So let's forget about all this other energy that we waste in trying to speculate whether she was a virgin or not and focus upon the fact that Mary was a very young person. We, in today's terminology, we would say she was a mere adolescent. Back in those days, they had no such word as adolescent. It just didn't exist in their vocabulary. But they knew what a maiden was. And that's what Mary was. She was a young maiden. Bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, with her entire life facing her. And this is where it gets really, really important. When Mary knows that she is pregnant, she goes to see her cousin Elizabeth in some village that is actually unnamed, where she greets Elizabeth, and something important happens. The text says that Elizabeth, who was with child herself, experienced the baby in her womb leaping. There was something about Mary's presence that caused her cousin Elizabeth to react very strongly to her presence, to her visitation. <clears throat> it's as though Elizabeth realized she was in the presence of the Holy. Now, not everybody brings that aura about them. So you begin to get a more realistic picture of who Mary was, even as a young maiden. She carried with her that quality of the sacred that is rare. We usually find it in elderly people who have suffered a great deal. And so it's even more uncommon to find it in a young maiden. That quality that somehow or another when you're in the presence of this person, you yourself are blessed. That's the kind of aura that Mary brought about with her, with her presence. And I believe she carried it about her for the rest of her life. So the second thing I want to say is, Mary proclaimed to Elizabeth some things that are contained in a prayer we call the Magnificat. It probably came out of uh, the story of Hannah in 1 Samuel, the first book of Samuel in the Hebrew Scriptures. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. But that's not all the Magnificat says. If we think of Mary, even as a young girl, as being this very meek and mild woman, you'd better think again. That is not true of Mary, the mother of Jesus. Because when she proclaims the Magnificat, she contains within it thoughts that are very, very mature and very alarming to some people. For example, not only does she talk about how God has blessed her, but she says, God has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their house. Mary is about moving creation itself and humanity, certainly, in a new direction. There is, there is a social gospel to the Magnificat that we must never, ever forget. 
Mary had some grit about her. God has brought down the powerful from their thrones. I mean, read it for the first time with your eyes wide open and see if you don't agree that Mary possessed some kind of courage and steel within her that resisted political oppression. So much so that she tells Elizabeth and all those for all time, God has brought down the powerful from their thrones. There will be a new way of constructing the social order in which we live. And God lifts up the lonely. God himself has compassion and care for the lowly. I can't think of anything more that just reeks of social justice and compassion for the poor than that. And she continues, He, God, has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. Not only on the political level does God shake things up, but on the economic level as well. This is coming from a 14-year-old girl. Who is it? The Greta Thurberg? Is that how you pronounce her name? And how impressed we are with the way that she calls attention to the environmental crisis in the world? Well, this was the Mary message as well, with as much grit as Greta Thurberg has. And finally she says, he has helped his servant Israel in the remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his descendants forever. In the eyes of God, in the coming of the birth of her son, there will be a new world order. Now that is scriptural. It is not an image of Mary as just this meek and submissive person. She had grit about her. The final thing I want to say is, is that Mary in all probability as she aged told the story of the birth of Jesus of the flight into Egypt, and perhaps of other accounts that the evangelist only heard about years, even decades later. Think about it. How did Matthew, Mark, Luke know all about the Nativity if somebody who hadn't been present at the Nativity told the story of how it happened. It had to be either Mary or Joseph. Jesus was too young to be able to tell the story. And I doubt it was Joseph. Mary seems to have lived longer than Joseph. So Mary was the one who told that wonderful story of how the Son of God was born in a stable humble and lowly. And she told that story for all generations, including us, to remember. Mary had to be the one that told the story that got circulated in the early Christian community and recorded by the Gospel writers about the flight into Egypt. Mary, in some respects, was responsible for at least a portion of the writing of the scriptures in terms of the Gospels. Again, another example of this tremendous woman who contributes even to this very day so much to our faith. The final thing that I want to say is this. I'm not a woman. I have no idea what it's like to carry a child. But I have to believe that in all of us,
when we were in the womb, all of us, including Jesus, were comforted by the heartbeats of our mothers. That there's something about a regular heartbeat being in the womb that brings a great sense of predictability and security to the baby inside of our mothers. That means that when you and I were in the womb, we were comforted by our mother's heartbeat. In fact, in Scripture, it is not a, a stretch to say that when Elizabeth saw Mary, that Elizabeth's heart rate rose, and that's what caused John the Baptist to leap in the womb, because he was affected by his very mother's heartbeat. Does that make sense to you? That we're all affected by our mothers, right from the moment of conception, I suppose. And that's another thing about Mary that's so important for all of us, whether we bear the Son of God or not. That there's something about being a mother that allows that baby within us to experience the very heartbeat of life. And that's the first conscious moment. of spirituality, that we are conceived not just physically, but we are conceived in terms of being able to look at things and to predict things with some regularity because of the drum that we hear in our mother's heart. A friend of mine wrote a song, and she said, we're all dancers to the drum. And she's right. We're all dancers to the drumbeat of our mother's hearts, even when we didn't even know that once we were born. And the Son of God is no exception. The Son of God is a dancer to the drum of his mother's heartbeat. Now, talking about Mary in that light, is much more meaningful and much more significant than debating whether or not she was a virgin. On that, I hope we can all agree. Amen. Amen. Now let us stand and say aloud together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, God. Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of the one begotten with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate with the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one and only Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen.
Brothers of the people, please stand, kneel, or be seated as you're comfortable. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world. For our presiding bishop, Michael, our bishop, Susan, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. We pray for our own needs and those of others, especially Rick and Cree, Devin, Katie, Cindy, Vicki, Sydney, Christine, Linda, Tatum, Janie, Paula, Derek, Cookie, Jay, Nicole, Ken and Mary Lynn, Sharon, Barbara, Karen, Colleen, Cindy, and Tom. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or in deeper knowledge of Him. Pray that they may find and be found by Him. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. I ask your thanksgiving for those celebrating their birthday and for those celebrating their wedding anniversary. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Almighty God, on this, the fourth Sunday of Advent, we thank you for the gift of Mary. May she represent in all of us, male and female, the finest in human nature, the ability to be courageous, the ability to speak the truth in love. Bless those for whom we are keeping in our thoughts and prayers. And this season, just before Christmas Day, we ask that you bring about a sense of peace in the world. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. And now, kneeling as you are able, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry that we never repent. For the sake of our Savior Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may apply to your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Would you please stand? <laughs> the peace of the Lord be always with you.
She gave me some help to do with this. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due God's name. Bring offerings and enter into God's courts with praise and thanksgiving. Generation, 
We lift our voices with all creation as we sing. <laughs> Christ 
our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. My, my sisters and brothers, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. stand on page 19 let us pray almighty and elevated god we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood for the sin of our savior jesus christ and for assuring us in each holy ministry that we are living members of the body of your son and heirs of your eternal and now, Father, send us out to do the work. 
work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sanctifier, be amongst you and remain with, with you always. Amen. Amen. The closing hymn is hymn number 107, Good Christian Friends Rejoice. <laughs> Father John, lead us through these interesting times. <laughs> and I'm sure 2022 is going to give him an opportunity to continue his great leadership. Uh, on behalf of our congregation, your church family, we have a special Christmas gift for you. Well, thank you. And I present this to you on behalf of your family with our love and our respect. That is most kind of you. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes, you have to come, my friend. Thank you. You are wonderful people. And now, would you please stand? <clears throat> Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.